All right, Nick, well, we're just going to do a quick introduction, and then we'll get right... Hello, everyone, and welcome to Stories of the Extraordinary. I am your host, Patrick Slane. And Lily Diaz. And today we have an extraordinary guest with us, Mr. Nick Nanton. Nick is an author. He is a director. He is a producer. He has over 2,000 clients in 33 countries. He is a three-time Emmy Award winner, and he is up for his uh, fourth one this year. Is that correct, Mr. Mr. Nanton? That's correct. Excellent, excellent. And, uh, or, or pardon me, Nick. <laughs> uh, his most recent uh, documentary was featured on uh, High Point University's very own Dr. Nito Arcabane, A Life of Success and Significance. So, Nick, it is certainly a pleasure to have you on. Good to be here, man. I'm glad that anything with High Point, I'm in. <laughs> All right. Well, we will admit those are some very impressive cr- credentials. Now, you know, where do you find the time to be able to do all this? Because, I mean, Patrick and I, were, we're just like, how? <laughs> we're, we are baffled. Um, I think it's, um, where do you find the time? That's a great question. It's, um, it's kind of like the same answer to the question, where do you find the time to breathe? I mean, if it's what you do, <laughs> it's just what you do. You know what I mean? You, mm-hmm. I know people who are... I mean, I guess it's, it's, everyone needs to find what drives them. One of my mentors and coaches... Dan Sullivan, he's a he's the top entrepreneur coach in the world, coaches his thousands of entrepreneurs. And, and one thing he says is you need to find a way to get within what he calls your unique ability. And unique ability is something that as you narrow down the things that you do and the things you enjoy doing, you really should come up, at the end of the day, you should find this one skill set that's unique ability. And that thing should be something that you're more excited every day when you wake up just to do that. People are willing to pay you more and more money to do it and and it's always fun for you and so i think you know just if, if people just can kind of grasp that concept I mean, that's really why i do what i do i you know certainly there are i'm still refining my unique ability finding ways to only do that there's certainly days when there's things i don't want to be do i don't do exactly what i'm doing for an hour or two but that's it's pretty rare i mean mostly it's just like i'm sitting on a plane and wishing i could get somewhere faster but you know i think it's, it's all about figuring out what it is that you do and doing that the best you can and you know if you can provide value to the world of that unique ability then you know then the rest will sort of take care of itself i mean i don't want it to seem like you know you don't have to do anything else but you know like uh, uh dr Cobain and i are writing a new book right now um and it, it's it's called how successful people think and, and a big piece of it i actually i wanted the book to be called the value equation but we had a little fight with the publisher there, and, you know, you don't always win your battles. Um, you pick the ones you want to win. And really, a big piece of it is all about creating value. If you can create value, then uh, then money will come because people are always willing to pay because you're actually, if you're the one who actually creates the value, if you're the one who takes, you know, the plastic and turns it into a microchip that went from, you know, having little value to a lot of value or someone who can take a, an athlete to make them perform at a level where they'll win a Super Bowl, well, you're creating value, and people are always willing to pay for value creation. So I, I guess to kind of button up what I'm trying to say here is figure out what it is that you love doing and find a way to create value for others with it. And it's a pretty simple but profound way to make money. Yeah, that's fabulous, Nick. Uh, so tell us, what, what is the average day in your life like? Average day? Um, so I travel a lot. Um, I'm only gone seven nights a month. We have three kids and a wife that I love a lot. Um, but I... I'll typically, so there's, I'm probably out of the office at least a couple of days a week. The days I'm in the office is typically catching up with everybody, getting everyone on the same page of the new projects we're working on. The rest of my time is spent out in the field filming or uh, out at events, either speaking and speak at events and keynote all around the world. Um, and I also, um, you know, at those types of events, I also, you know, connect with really bright people that I want to do business with. So I'm speaking at an event coming up, uh, Vern Harnish, who's a very well-known author, has a book called Mastering the Rockefeller Habits. So I'm speaking at Vern's event coming up. So I met Vern at a few events back that I was speaking at. And so I really spend my time trying to surround myself with people who uh, are, are um, uh, three, five, six levels above where I am, whether that's uh, income or that's brain power or whatever it is. I try to spend time in rooms with really bright people. And a lot of it's at conferences and stuff. Thankfully, I get to speak at a lot of them, but I go to some too just to, you know, just to connect with people and, and, and make deals happen. So I'd say uh, half the time I'm in the office, half the time I'm out of the office. It really is no typical day when I am home. Like this morning, I, uh, you know, I take my kids to school at, at 8. I usually work out right after that. Um, some days I'll take 
Uh, my daughter is three. She's the youngest, so I'll take her to preschool like I did today. And then, uh, you know, I, I came to the office and started to get to work, and I took the leave by 4.30 or latest 5. If I'm at home, I'm, I'm, I try to spend as much time with the, the kids and the family as I can. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, well, Nick, many of your get clients have been sponsored on CBS, NBC, ABC, and other Fox-affiliated shows. What role do you play in getting your clients on these type of programs? So it, it all depends. But, I mean, I, my business partner, I created the show. Uh, I direct the show. We produce the show. And sometimes I host the show. So it can be, it can be many different roles. But really what, what we try to do is, when I was building my career, I realized that media, and particularly television, was kind of you know, one of the one of the pieces of what you call kind of the holy grail of getting credibility. I mean, if you've been on TV, on these networks, and all these things, I mean, people automatically assign credibility to you. And so, you know, I I couldn't find easy ways to get on TV, and so I just created my own shows, and it was much easier that way. And so <laughs> we've now. We've now had uh, you know over 450 of our clients on our show, and you know it built their credibility and they've used it to build their businesses. So I mean, I really tackle media and PR from a much more practical standpoint than most people do. I use it as a tool to help you you know position yourself and grow your credibility. I don't use it as a tool um, like most people do, where I'm, I try and try and try to get on some sort of show. And hopefully it happens, but most of the time it doesn't. Um, so we use it as a practical way to help build people's, you know, persona as well as to help position them differently than other people in the marketplace. That's very interesting. Now, Nick, you say uh, that you take your clients and you can turn them into best-selling authors. Talk to us about uh, this. What does this process look like? And so explain to us that process. Um, <clears throat> that process is, I mean, we do it multiple different ways. We have collaborative books that we work on together like we're working on a book right now with jack canfield the you know the co-author of the chicken soup of the soul series we worked with everyone from steve forbes to brian tracy to uh to actually dr cobain and so we have collaborative books where we allow our clients to apply and you know write one chapter in a collaborative book much like the chicken soup of the soul kind of uh type, type process and then we also have individual books for our clients and, and like i do my, my business partner and i we write you know full books by ourselves and we obviously we handle all the publishing. We we published uh, over, geez, I think the number is like sixteen hundred best-selling authors or something like that. Wow. But we, yeah, but I mean, you know, a lot of that just to not play up too much. A lot of that is books with thirty or forty authors. It's a collaborative book. Mm-hmm. But the point being, we we have a process. Like anything, anything good in business, you have a process for. So when we promise a client they're going to be a best-selling author, we have, you know, from soup to nuts, we have a system for taking them all the way through the book writing process all the way through the you know the launch process and all the way through the publicity and so it's a um you know it's it's, it's a formula like anything else and so you've got to know got to know your numbers you got to know who's launching this week against you you got to know what kind of odds you have i mean so it's just uh i don't know it's like anything else you you got to figure out uh you got to figure out who else is in the game and how to win mm-hmm. okay now you, your recent documentary was with our own mm-hmm. president you know dr nita kubain a Life of Success and Significance, which was wonderful, by the way. Can, can you tell us how you got into directing? How I got into what, sorry? Directing. Yeah, um, yeah I decided I wanted to direct. Um, like most things, you, you figure out what you want to do and find a way to do it. So, I mean, I, I had messed around a little bit when I was in uh, undergrad and law school, produced and directed a few music videos. Uh, but as I was... As I was kind of building this uh, celebrity branding agency, and we had done, you know, we had done some TV work and stuff. Like I said, we created some more TV shows, but I really, and I really wanted to create some other content more in the in kind of the film genre. And so, uh, just kind of randomly, I, I came across. I met a guy in an airport. His son had Down syndrome. We became friends. We started chatting. He sent me a story about how uh, his wife had written that story in the local newspaper or to the local community that was being published in the newspaper about, you know, their son's experience and how amazing it was and how accepting everybody was. And uh, I read it, and I thought it was an amazing story. I shared it with a couple people for the day. And uh, then I just thought, you know, I'm going to make this into a short film. I'm going to make a seven- to ten-minute short movie on it. And so I did, I did it, and I just, I mean, I guess I just, I had to play the role of director because I knew, I, knew, I knew what I wanted, and I didn't know... I didn't have the budget probably to find someone else who I thought could do it. 
And so I just went out and, you know, hired hired the camera guys and the audio guys and all the all the other people I knew I needed to make the film. Um, but we went out and made the film. And so it, it worked out. We won an Emmy for that one. It was our first one. And then we've made maybe 20 films since then. And, uh, you know, I guess I hopefully I get better as a director every day. But I think like everything else, I just I needed a director. And, and I was the closest one. So. <laughs> Excellent. Now, uh, Nick, here in a matter of months, our senior class is going to be entering the working world in search for jobs, whether that be working for a Fortune 500 company or becoming an entrepreneur. What are some words of wisdom that you can buy, uh, provide for our senior class? Uh, I would say, well, if you are, if you're not already starting on the path and, and trying to execute daily on the path that you want to be on, then you are you're behind the eight ball. Not that you can't catch up, but my best advice for every, whenever I speak to universities and stuff, I tell everyone to start doing whatever you want to do, whatever you ultimately want to do, start doing it today because you have the most, you know, you have, although in your senior year it can get busy, but you're really in, in college for the most part. Most people have the most unrealistic financial needs they'll ever have because they've either got, you know, parents running the bill, financial aid, whatever it is. Um, so, so they have, unrealistic needs uh, that's not a good way to put it it's like you have it's a, the easiest you have the easiest access to money you're ever going to have again in your life and you have the most amount of time I mean while we all I was very busy in university I was running my own businesses I was uh, you know running different student organizations but still you know 12 hours a week is I mean it's full time I mean and that's yeah it's supposed to be three hours outside of every class for every hour in class but we all know that's that's probably not true for most people. So I, w I would just say try to find ways to, to just bury yourself in the things that you want to be doing. So because the day you graduate, you should, I mean, I went to undergrad and law school, and I'm so thankful I did. Education is, you know, is a life changer. But nothing happens the moment you graduate. Yes, you get a diploma, but there is also a, a so what moment. So, okay, so you got a diploma, so what? Now you're like, now you're like where you should be. So that's not, you know, I'm not going to give you any extra credit for having a diploma. So do these millions of other job applicants and everything else. So I think the best thing you can do is if you want to start doing something, there's very few fields you have to go into where you have to have professional licensing. So, like, but even if you wanted to be a lawyer, yeah, you can't go out and practice law, but you could go become a paralegal and work for a lawyer. Or if you want to become a painter, I mean, well, you should have been painting all this time and trying to figure out how to sell paintings because, again, you either likely got student loans or, or maybe your parents are helping you out and you have your needs aren't quite as high as they're going to be as soon as you graduate and you got to get out on your own so just my advice for seniors or anyone else is whatever you want to do start figuring out how to do it today because it's going to take you a while to figure out how to make the amount of money you want to make doing it and so you might as well do it while you have other things supporting you okay well you are known as a personal branding expert do you sometimes encounter difficulties when helping your clients? And, and if you do, what's your process of overcoming them? Uh, sorry, you broke up a little bit there. I'm sorry. If you could oh. ask one more time. You're known as a personal branding expert. Do you sometimes encounter difficulties when helping your clients? And if you do, what is the process of overcoming them? Oh, God. Yeah, no, I mean, no, I, I, I would say I don't. I mean, really the key to any any personal brand i'd say any brand is so branding is just storytelling that's it people will try to confuse you and charge you all sorts of money to tell you all sorts of different things but at the end of the day your brand is your story and branding is just storytelling so all i do with clients is i work through where did you come from where are you now where do you want to go it's a very simple formula where you just work through that because when you look at the points that connected the dots in someone's past they're not unrelated to where they want to go in the future i mean i have a good friend i produced a record when i was back in gainesville um with a girl named Hannah who was 12 years old at the time and, and was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. So we got a bunch of celebrities together. I wrote a song with her called I Won't Give Up. We did a whole album. She ended up singing it in Times Square to begin the Revel and Run Walk for Women with the Gospel Choir, and it was killer. But <clears throat> Hannah has now just got into medical school. And, you know, if I were looking at Hannah's personal brand, obviously she wants to be an oncologist. And so as she gets out into the, the workforce in the world, well, she's not going to be, there's lots of oncologists in every city, but if I were building her personal brand, I would clearly use parts of her story from her past, which connect her to the, to why she's there. You know, it's really, at the end of the day, there's, there's a great TED Talk, Simon Sinek, um, you know, the, I think he calls it the golden rule. But so if you really ask, what's your why? And if you can get to the, to the root of what someone's why is, everything else falls into place. 
because you just mm-hmm. tell the story of that why. I don't know many people whose why are are evil or they, or they're they don't mean anything. And and if they are, I guess that's why they don't end up with me. But the the point is, when you can start telling somebody's story and connect the dots of their past with their why, then it becomes very easy to build that story for that brand. Mm-hmm. That's excellent. Well, Nick, uh, I simply wanted to say thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule to come, uh, to speak with us. Uh, it was certainly a pleasure having you on. It's absolutely my pleasure, and uh, you guys let me know if you need anything else. All right. All right. Great. Thank you so much, Nick. Have a good week. Okay, take care. All right. Bye. Bye.